Okay, this is our lensometer on the optical bench. And the pieces of the puzzle work like this. We have our object over here on the left, which will be this cross target. Notice that I put two pieces of tape across there uh, for reasons we'll talk about a little bit later. And I've labeled this as my target on the bench, just so I know what I've got here. The target is sometimes called the reticule inside the instrument, so I just thought I'd call it that. The next thing we have in line is the Bedal lens. You're going to use a plus 10 lens for your Bedal lens here, and you can see that it's about at the uh, 50 centimeter mark. The next thing in line is going to be your unknown lens, which you're going to be measuring. And again, I got that marked over here as unknown lens. And the next thing you have are two uh, plus 20 lenses, one plus 20 and another plus 20 over here. And those two together form a telescope system. These two lenses need to be approximately 10 centimeters away from each other, but we're going to adjust their position just a little bit as we go through the lab. So the way this will work is, um, as we put a different lens in place, that our target position needs to move as well. So we'll be moving the target back and forth along the bench, and when we find a spot where uh, it is in focus, we're going to take a Sharpie pen and mark along on this piece of tape. I'm going to show you an example of that here in just a second. We've got a piece of tape that's about 40 centimeters long. It starts over here with the Bedal lens. It's going to hang it off the bottom just so I can see the tape a little bit. And in a minute, we're going to mark the place where the target's located for different powers being measured. Now, in order for this to work for our starting point, we need to find the zero point on the bench. Now, um, as we talked about in class, the location of our target needs to be exactly uh, the focal length of the Bedal lens away from it. So in the case here, we've got a plus 10 lens. So this target needs to be exactly 10 centimeters away from it when we're measuring Plano power on, a, on the bench. So um, that's one reason we put the tape on there to make it easier to have the target uh, at the front of the box. So what you want to do is measure from the box to the um, side of the lens closest to the target and make sure that's exactly 10 centimeters. So you may need to move the um, target just a little bit back and forth, leave the Bedal lens alone, move the target back and forth just a little bit and measure to make sure that you have precisely 10 centimeters to the back side of your lens. Okay, so we have the distance between the target and the Bedal lens set now so that we've got, should have zero vergence coming out of that plus 10 Bedal lens, which means with no lens here in the holder, and I moved it out of the way, we should have Plano going into the first of the plus 20 lenses, and since this is a telescope system, we're going to have zero vergence coming out over here on the uh, other side. So to make sure that happens, you need to adjust your eyepiece a little bit. So look through the instrument, like so, and look at the target. And what you're going to do is uh, loosen the clamp on the plus 20 lens that's farthest from the target or closest to you and pull it back until things look very blurry through there. The target's very, very blurry. Okay, and then what you want to do is to simply move the plus 20 lens closer until everything's nice and clear, crisp and in focus for you. Don't go too far though. You want to get just to the point where the target is nice and clear and then stop. One way you'll know that you're clear here is when you can see the grain of the tape nice and sharply in focus. That's the easiest way to try to get it in focus for you. So again, pull the plus 20 lens uh, back a little bit to spread them apart, which means a lot of plus is going to be coming out so you won't be accommodating. And then move the plus 20 lens closer to the other plus 20 lens until you can first make out the detail on the tape. Now that I have my eyepiece focused, I'm going to go over here to the bench and make a mark on the bench to indicate where my zero point is for the lensometer. So I make a zero there and that means if the target is positioned here, then I've got a Plano powered unknown lens. Anywhere over to the left of this is where I would have the target for measuring minus powers. Anywhere to the right of this is where I need the target to measure plus powers. So the next thing we're going to do is to measure an unknown lens. Now I put a minus one in here and what I need to do now is to go through and look through the telescope again um, until I get things clear one more time. Since it's hard to see through that telescope lens with the camera, I'm just going to show you what I'm doing here. I know that for the minus lenses, I got a minus one in the, in the setup. I need to move the target uh, farther away, so I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to look through there with my own eye and move the target closer until it first looks like it's in focus. And this is where the target was located for my minus one lens when it was nice and sharply in focus. So I'm just going to put a mark on here and put minus one. 
now I have replaced my minus 1 lens with a minus 2. And in order for us to do this, I'm going to need to move the target further into the minus range over here, and then go look through the telescope and bring it a little bit closer until it comes in focus again. Now again, it's important for you to um, dip too much quote into the minus over here, so move the target real far away, and then pull it back toward you until it's close. If you go over into the plus and come back, you'll actually start accommodating through the instrument, and you'll get bad readings. So after I refocused, I'm going to put a little mark here for my minus 2, and you can see that they're about a centimeter apart as we do this. So the next steps are to keep repeating that with a 3, a 4, a 5, and a 6 lens until you get it calibrated for it to about minus 6, and then do the same thing for like plus 1 and plus 2 uh, over here so you can get some calibration readings. And then you'll put an unknown lens in there that your partner will give you, and um, you'll try to figure out exactly what the power is based upon where uh, the target position ends up. Okay, so here I've gone through with uh, powers minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, and I figured out my target positions for each one of those uh, powers that I was measuring. Um, one thing you want to be careful for is to, uh, again, always move into the minus and kind of come back until the target is nice and clear. If you go any farther past that point, you can start accommodating when you look through the tube, uh, and therefore you will get a bad reading. So go past it and come kind of back towards it when you're looking through the telescope until it is very first nice and sharp and clear. If you feel like you've gone too far, start all over again and keep coming back until it's nice and clear. Uh, for example, I probably made a mistake here when I did minus 5 because it's not exactly halfway between 4 and 6, um, so I probably should go re back, re back and recalibrate that one again. Um, but I wanted to leave that there to show you that I uh, easily probably pushed this target a little too close and I started accommodating when I looked at it. So be kind of careful when you do that. So now I've gone through and done my plus powers, so I went up to about plus 4. Now you can keep on doing this, eventually you'll run out of space um, to where the target base bangs into the uh, base of the dowel lens, so you can't really get them uh, touching each other. Um, but if you could get them touching each other, you'd run out at about plus 10, because that's the power of the Bedal lens. And again, obviously with the minuses, um, I could keep on adding minus power and uh, measure more and more and more and more minus until my target ran out of space over here on the bench. And now what we want to do is see if we can actually uh, really measure the power of a lens. I put a lens in here in the middle that I have not checked the number on yet. I pulled it from kind of the middle to low range of the minus lenses. And what I want to do is see if I can get it uh, focused on the bench and come up with the right power for it. So I go over here and I move my target very far away again. And then I look through my telescope until it is nice and sharp and in focus. Again, um, and that will then wherever it lands should be the power for my lens. Okay, so I've made my measurement. Let's see where I ended up here. I've ended up almost at minus 4. You can see my target position is closer to 4 than minus 3. And let's see what I ended up with. I didn't cheat here. I really didn't look at this. And we can see that the number on my unknown lens, if it'll focus here, you can't see that, is 3 and a quarter. And there you can see it. So, um, came pretty close. Wasn't exactly right, but it came pretty close. So when I measured it on the bench here, again, I got a little, about a half a doctor off or so from where it's supposed to be. There's a little bit of slop in the system. It's not perfect. Um, the primary problem with this bench setup is that our telescope is not accurate enough. Um, and what I mean by that is um, it's got a very long depth of focus, meaning that I can move the target back and forth a few millimeters um, before I really notice any blurring over here when I look through the telescope. Uh, and the real lensometer has a very short depth of focus, so if you're off even less than a quarter of an adapter, you're going to get a blurry image inside the lensometer. But this is the basic idea, and just to kind of illustrate uh, the basic concepts of what's going on inside the lensometer, you're going to set this up on the bench for the lab.